up family it's the mobile home diva and in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you my homemade mac and cheese recipe not just mac and cheese i'm making a whole meal um right now i'm peeling the shrimp they were frozen and i got them unthawed soaking in some cool water i'm also going to put on the water for the pasta that i'm going to use to make my mac and cheese when that starts to get hot, I add a little butter. Most recipes call for a stick of butter. I don't use that much butter. It's just too much butter for me. Y'all know I'm the queen of putting in what feels right. So it's up to you. If you want to use a stick of butter, you can. Once the water starts boiling, go ahead and add your pasta. In this case, I'm using one pound of pasta, which is one regular size box. I'll stir that from time to time to make sure it's not sticking. And then once I have got that going, I'll go back to my shrimp. I actually went in the freezer and grabbed a few more because I didn't think I had enough. And so those soak for a few minutes and now they're ready to peel. So I can add those to the remaining, to the other shrimp that I peeled previously. I know I didn't do it all on video, but I've done that so many times on video for you. I thought I'd skip through that part because we don't want the macaroni noodles to boil too much. We just want them al dente. And so I get the shrimp out of the way so that I can strain the pasta. So as you can see, the noodles are what you call al dente. They've softened, softened but they're not mushy. Um, remember, they're going to cook in the oven. So squish them around and let um, get rid of as much excess water as you can. And then pour them into the bowl that you'll be mixing with so that you can prepare to add the other ingredients. The first thing I'm gonna add is butter. Now, uh, again, most recipes call for a whole stick of butter. I just wanna make sure that my noodles are coated. We don't use a whole lot of butter and we don't want it our food to be really greasy. My husband has a sensitive stomach, so I'm really mindful of that. I add just enough butter that all of the noodles appear to be moist and coated and if you need to add more do so if you want to use a pound of butter you can do that too it's totally up to you now i want to um, add sour cream that's right you may not have heard of that before but i put sour cream in mine in this case i'm using a pint of sour cream it gives it that flavor it makes it really really good try it it's something that you, I guarantee you'll like. So now we're adding garlic powder, onion powder. We're going to add just a hint of uh, salt, just a hint, not a whole lot, because we're adding so much stuff that has sodium. And also we're gonna add paprika. Now paprika doesn't really, this isn't smoked pa paprika or anything like that. It's regular pap paprika. It doesn't have taste, it's just for color. I'm using a Fiesta blend, Walmart brand shredded cheese. It has a few different kinds of cheese in it. Now you can use block cheese, you can grate your own cheese, you can use whatever kind of cheese you want. For me, the more cheese, the merrier. This Fiesta blend gives three or four different kinds. I'm gonna pour quite a few cups in, but I do it a cup at a time. So I first add a cup of the Fiesta blend, and now I'm going to add a cup of Velveeta. I don't put a lot of Velveeta. I don't like that big Velveeta mushiness and taste, but I do like um, to really taste the cheeses and get that string cheese effect. So I use just a little Velveeta. Now I'm going to do half a cup of Velveeta and half a cup of the Fiesta blend to top it off. So that's three cups of cheese to one pound of pasta is what I use. Mix that up really, really well. And then we're gonna sit that to the side. Now we're gonna sit it to the side and we're gonna make our custard. You're going to need three eggs, all right? And then after the eggs, I use heavy whipping cream. This is a pint of heavy whipping cream. You can use more, you can use less. It's really up to you. And I also add two cups of milk. So once I've uh, added my additional cup of milk, 
then we are going to, um, sorry, I had to check on my pot. We are going to stir that up really well and then prepare to um, start putting our macaroni together. Now you want to make sure you got all of those eggs beaten up and you can sit that to the side because it's time to get our pan. Clean up your area. That's what I'm doing. I always clean as I go. But it's time to get our pan and start layering. Now I'm using a cast iron pan. Cast iron pan makes a mean macaroni and cheese. If you don't have a cast iron pan, you can use a casserole dish or any other kind of pan that you prefer. And I like to grease my pan. I'm using butter. And um, you may want to use something to spread it. It's up to you. But I'm old school cook. I use my hands for a lot. And I'm uh, not melting the butter, but wiping it on. I want to make sure that that macaroni doesn't stick to the pan and that it does what it's supposed to do. So here I am adding um, three cups of pasta. And then I'm going to layer on my cheeses. I'm going to put some Fiesta blend. And I'm also going to put just a little Velveeta. And then I'm going to pour in two cups of the custard um excuse me three cups of the custard and so once i've done that i want to make sure that my macaroni is evenly distributed evenly around the pan and get ready to add the remaining mac and cheese it's probably another i don't know cup and a half or so i mean two cup two and a half cups or so i don't know um, I just want to make sure that I put a half of it in, put in the custard, and then put the other half, spreading the macaroni around so it's even. And again, this is a layering process. So I'm going to add some more cheese, um, the Fiesta blend, and the uh, Velveeta, and then distribute it evenly. I'm going to add some more cheese to the top, and this is where, where I really put the cheese is on making sure it's all around the edges um last little bit of Velveeta and just making sure that I have just the right amount of cheese all around it now the one thing that I forgot to do and you probably want to do um, before you put the macaroni and cheese in the oven is to add just a little bit more paprika in the top for taste uh, excuse me for color just to make it a little darker. Mine came out pretty good, but I wish I had to put paprika on it. So I finished peeling the shrimp and now it is time to cut up my onions and peppers because I'm also gonna make some baked beans. Um, and we love onion and peppers. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I, that I use onion and bell pepper in just about everything. Now this doesn't have to be diced really small. Um, because we want um, to see and taste the peppers in our baked beans. That's just how we like them. So I just cut them up just enough. Again, I'm using another cast iron skillet. When the butter gets to melting, we'll go ahead and add our onions and peppers. And you want to get those caramelized in the pan. Once they're caramelized, then you can add the beans. You don't want to get them really mushy, but you do want them to caramelize. So once you start seeing them um, browning and getting that caramel caramelized look, then you can go ahead and add in your baked beans. I only use one large can of baked beans. Once they started boiling, I turned the heat down and covered them um, and then seasoned uh, the shrimp so that they could go in the air fryer. I'm using, again, um, onion powder garlic powder creole seasoning and i'm using a garlic and herb old bay seasoning so that's what i'm using to season the shrimp i am um adding in my seasonings and because i'm not ready to cook the shrimp yet i'm gonna let them just sit in the seasoning um until i'm ready to cook them i actually put these in the refrigerator for a while and then once I was ready to prepare them uh, I placed them in the air fryer I'm not going to show that part either you guys have seen me do that 
but I just wanted to show you what I use to season. This part is optional. You can do fish fry or not um, to fry your shrimp. But here is the main attraction, you guys. This is my mac and cheese. It came out really good. It was so good. It looked good. I could have put some paprika on it, made it a little darker, but hey, it was good. It tasted good. It was so cheesy. Um, and the whole meal just tastes well together. So baked beans, macaroni and cheese, and uh, we put that shrimp in the air fryer. Hope you enjoy. Happy cooking.